All right. Can you? Okay, great. Um, someone has to. All right. Anyway, sorry for the delay. Um, someone is using Zoom in the room. Just bear with us a moment. All right. No. <laughs> we have a small technical problem here, uh, but we will just to um, Are we good now? All right, perfect. Just to show that we actually have people in the room. So welcome everyone. Uh, we are um, in the final session of, um, of um, Pioneers uh, Programs Project Class, uh, which we have every year at the Taltec. Um, my name is Veiko Lember. I'm a senior research fellow at, uh, at the Ragnar Ruxa uh, Department of Innovation and Governance here at uh, Taltec. And I'm also a local coordinator of the Pioneer Masters program. And uh, this particular class um, that uh, we had this uh, autumn was a joint class between uh, organized together with the, the government innovation team. And this is already for the third year in a row that we do such kind of a hands-on class. And this year uh, we um, joined our hands or we, we uh, uh, made a partnership with the Minister of Finance, uh, people working on the um, local government dashboards uh, project. And um, the general idea of uh, this year's uh, project was to make sense or to develop new ideas, how to make the most out of the local government dashboards when it comes to environmental data. Uh, we have um, Helen and Marilyn here from the innovation team who will talk more uh, about what the class was about. We also have Carl from Minister of Finance here. Um, uh, they all gonna talk a bit in a moment about the class. But before we start the presentations, let me very briefly um, uh, uh, introduce um, uh, what the general structure uh, of the program and of the class is and how we're gonna um, organize today's session. So as said, this is um, um, the project was carried out within the Pioneer Masters Program. Pioneer Masters Program uh, is an acronym of Public Sector Innovation and E-Governance. This is a joint Masters Program between three European universities. Uh, so it's um, Münster University in Germany, it's uh, KU Leuven in Belgium and Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia. And actually students have to go, have to live in those three countries, although in the pandemic time, uh, living in a country is uh, somewhat uh, fuzzy concept these days. We tend to live in Zoom as we are now, rather than in actual places. But here we are, uh, finally the students are here. Um, finally the snow is here as well. So I uh, hope you can all adjust to the, again to this new situation. And this massive program, Pioneer program, uh, focuses, as the name says, on public sector innovation and e-governance issues. And within this particular project, uh, we try to combine these insights, obviously. Um, as said, this is a um, cooperation between Taltec and the particular class, is a cooperation between the government innovation team and Taltec. And this year, as said, we also have uh, Minister of Finance uh, providing their support for the class. So before we um, 
Oh, there is a delay here. Before we um, uh, start, let me very briefly walk you through the schedule of today. So we're gonna have approximately two and a half hours session. We're gonna have a break in the middle. Uh, after the introduction, there will be uh, uh, first two group presentations. Then there is a little coffee break to stretch your legs. And then we're gonna have another two presentations. So all together, we had four projects and we're gonna discuss them all today. Um, before I give the word to um, um, our um, guests here, and um, let me, it doesn't work. Let me very briefly introduce also the house rules. So we are all more or less used to living in Zoom these days, but just in case uh, some, um, uh, some overview of today's uh, rules. So we're gonna have half an hour per group, meaning that we're gonna have 15 minutes long presentation, after which we're gonna have 15 minutes long Q&A session. So for the Q&A session, um, for those who are present here, um, uh, you're gonna have a chance to uh, put forward your comments or ask clarifying questions. For those, um, for those who are joining us over Zoom, please use the uh, Zoom chat or uh, raise your hands in Zoom. Uh, we're going to make sure that we will be uh, uh, getting all your questions from there as well. Um, please um, uh, mute your mic unless you are uh, not talking. Um, and um, this seminar is being recorded, uh, meaning that, um, uh, that we're going to be using that later in our dissemination um, activities. But I mean, there is no secret uh, related to those projects anyway. So the whole point is to, is to make sure that the ideas that the groups have developed will, will uh, find their way into practice, hopefully. All right, so with that, um, I wish us all a very interesting uh, morning session. And uh, over to you, Marilyn and Helen. And Carl. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, teams. Good morning, uh, everybody in the Zoom. Uh, we are the public sector innovation team. Uh, we were uh, giving this class uh, with three of us. So it was me, Marilyn, then uh, Helalin was uh, one, of the, one of the teachers and also Daniel, who's uh, right now in Zoom and might uh, wave to everybody. Um, yes, good morning from my side as well. Uh, and uh, as uh, Veiko mentioned, uh, uh, this is a uh, cooperation. Uh, it's uh, our third year. We are teaching this course uh, with this program. And um, we are actually applying a lot of the same uh, working methods with the students that we are in the public sector. And uh, the reason why we have been created is namely for uh, trying to understand better uh, what the users need and develop solutions that are much more uh, people-centered and, and user-centered. Uh, and uh, what we do is uh, we try to engage new types of uh, working also in the public sector uh, using uh, new kinds of methods, for example, design thinking, as well as bringing prototyping and, and other such uh, more agile methods into the public sector. And um, uh, there seem to be various technical problems today. Let me see if, uh, no, no, the slides are not moving. I hopefully will get things fixed by the time the students come up. But uh, the, the basic model that we use for uh, our processes, both in the public sector as well as for the course, is the, the service design um, double diamond model. And some of you may be familiar with it, uh, some of you may not. But really the idea behind it is that uh, very often when we encounter problems in uh, 
either public sector or, or private sector, we instantly jump into developing solutions. However, what we do in our projects and, uh, and together with the students as well, we, uh, we take about half of the time and we put it into understanding what the problem really is and what, how does the problem look from the user's um, uh, perspective. And uh, what we do uh, with our teams everywhere is the first thing they have to do is, uh, is go out and do field work meaning uh, interviewing students, uh, sorry, not students, but people and, uh, and, and end users, but sometimes also uh, specialists, uh, in this case, for example, local government officials. And only then after we've done field work, then, uh, and we've figured out what the problems are from the user's perspective is the time when we start developing the solutions. And, uh, and today we are, uh, yes, here uh, to, to develop, to, to present to you the uh, four that rose uh, out of the, the questions that were raised during the field work. As Helen said, uh, we usually um, go out to field work and then we develop solutions together with the users. And that's ex exactly what we did with this class as well. So the first half of the cl class, uh, students went out, uh, interviewed uh, people. And then in the second half, they also tested their ideas on people. So. Let's hear what they have to say. But before that, uh, just a short introduction to the topic. Uh, good morning. My name is Karl. I am the uh, product uh, <coughs> manager of the minimumavalitsus.ee dashboards. Uh, maybe there are some people joining us in the, uh, the Zoom that are not so familiar than a few words. Uh, it is uh, dashboards uh, web page publicly open for everybody and it is presenting uh, Estonians 79 local governments uh, um, public services uh, quality levels kind of and at the moment we have uh, 16 uh, public services uh, that are evaluated on this dashboard and we are working on adding environmental um, uh, I, I, en environment and climate uh, dashboard or the th theme um, and uh, yeah um, we are doing it parallel to the students work so we are already we have already some ideas what are going to be the metrics that are um, ev evaluating uh, local governments uh, support or effort towards climate and uh, environment uh, and yeah uh, next to the par parallel to the, um, the this activity we uh, made this comparison with InnoDeem and Taltec and uh, let's see what the students have uh, thought and yes uh, just maybe a short comment uh, the um, uh, the the task for the students was uh, was how could we use the dashboard in order to nudge the local governments uh, to act uh, so uh, this uh, this maybe uh, is helpful uh, for you to keep in mind when you're following uh, following the presentations but then uh, there are four uh, questions that uh, the students rose and uh, and that they uh, search solutions for uh, uh, these are the how might we questions that we use in the service design uh, process uh, first of them uh, is uh, how might we uh, make people heard based on data uh, how might we create actionable noise through the means of the dashboard how might we make climate data more personal and fourth how might we use media to communicate environmental needs of the citizens to the local decision makers but uh, we're ready for uh, the first team all right <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. My name is uh, Juliette and with my team, uh, Julia, Lucina and Misha, uh, we'd like to present to you our solution to create a local community uh, application for local governments and citizens. This city is what it is because citizens are what they are. 
Plato said that, not me. Um, and uh, it really comes with what we want to do with uh, our solution. We want to put the citizen in the center of it. And uh, you will see that during our research method and solution, they will be. So our agenda for the day, uh, we'll talk about uh, our methods, observation, solution, feedback, and uh, also the next step to develop it a little bit further. So listen in. Thank you, Juliette, and good morning, everyone. So to continue with um, our project, I'll start with uh, telling you about what was our method and the field work. So we went out there, we asked people about the problems that they have. We interviewed first group of people were 12 people, and then we built on this. So uh, the main goal here was to actually go deeper and to understand what are people's concerns and we tried not to directly lead them to environmental questions. We did semi-structured, almost like not structured interviews to see what is out there. At some point, we would also show them the dashboard and see what are their reactions. We would just ask them to navigate themselves through it and to play with it. So um, after that, uh, what we encountered is that, first of all, people didn't know about the dashboard. Uh, at times that were, they were quite skeptical about the data, but they were also really interested and they felt good that government is doing something and they also want to communicate it. So we asked them, what else do you want to see there? Can you somehow like relate yourself to the data here? Because that was our main goal to see if people can relate and if people can see some everyday actions that they do that ends up in the dashboard. Uh, the two main areas were the mobility and waste management that uh, people had a lot of minor to bigger concerns. They were uh, partially aware about the solutions that government is working on. So they were aware about the policies and they could also think about more problems that will follow after the policies. So it was quite a um, good discussion that we had with them. Uh, after this group of this, uh, interviews, can I ask to switch to the next slide? Thank you. So yeah, the next step was to synthesize, uh, to synthesize and see what we have. So our data that we got from them. And uh, here we again followed the citizen centric approach. So we tried to um, develop three main groups that we encountered. The first one was the one acting daily. Uh, we met a lot of people like that. Then it was the one which waits and see. So the ones who, would, the, who wouldn't take the action to themselves and who wouldn't take the responsibility, but they're interested to see what is going on. And the third type was the one uh, where climate change is not a priority. Um, but of course, uh, they were also mostly people who were not aware or partially aware about what is going on. Uh, we also tried to um, inc uh, incorporate this approach of user journey and understand uh, how things start. So uh, the first step of people getting informed about something going on and how their journey develops into using something and what they want to get in the end. Uh, so uh, with all this in mind, we came to our question, how might we question, which is uh, how might we make citizens heard based on data or through data? And this is our focus, the citizens. And with this in mind, I'll give the floor to my colleagues. Um, so on my side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to present um, what we actually have been working on, the prototype of the app, the result of um, our interviews, our discussions, and um, our solution and answer to our how might we question. Um, if you could start. Yes, so uh, you could see, um, um, you most probably know the Anatad app. It's quite used within the Estonian community uh, in different parts of the country. Um, and we felt like it's a good start and it will, um, combining with the data uh, that we have on the dashboard, it can be used to make people heard. You can see we have different menu options with different languages. This time we're gonna do it in English, so it's understandable to everyone. The first functionalities that will make people heard is the uh, submit your concern functionality, where people can submit long-term and short-term concerns uh, they can uh, activate the localization, they can enter their address, so the concern is localized to a specific area or specific address. 
briefly describe their concern and also add a picture if they feel necessary. Super easy, browse camera roll, choose a picture and upload. Uh, they can also remove the picture if they feel uh, so. Um, the data, there's also data available, how many cases have been sent, how many cases have been processed. Um, after that, you can see them on the map. You can see the list, um, different formats uh, for, um, the, uh, for different people. You can see also different uh, logs from other people. The category, the short description, uh, how many people voted for or against, and also a submission status, um, what our authorities are doing on this matter. Another functionality is the change for good. The, here we have two. Um, suggest a change for good uh, to your local government, where you uh, suggest more long-term uh, solutions. Uh, you can also add a category in the previous one. Um, you submit your proposal, which you can later discuss either on the forum or uh, on the social media, uh, in the Facebook groups, Twitter accounts, and so on. Second one is a commit to change for good in your everyday life. This way, citizens can see their own ecological footprint, making it more, more personalized. They can uh, calculate how much uh, they actually input in the um, ecological. Uh, you can also check out the tips and show your results on social media if you want to show off and be proud. Um, question of the week um, <clears throat> was created to engage people um, so they feel, um, feel like they input and they learn something. You can see right now it's a walkthrough um, for some questions. Um, and uh, in the end, again, either um, you can check your local county or you can check on forum and discuss uh, with your fellow members of your community and um, yes, present your results. Um, so I will now talk about the forum. The forum looks like any other forum that you might be familiar with. You can browse by topic or you can go to your locations forum, your community forum. Here you can see talent. So here are topics that are linked to the dashboard. You can also check out the trending topics in your area. Let's click on one of these. This one talks about the bike lanes, but you can also discuss how to self-organize something in your community to lobby the government, etc. You submit it anonymously with your nickname so as to stimulate more engagements than if you had to log in. And that's the form. Um, and then once citizens are hooked on these more familiar looking features, you can check your local county, which is the which is where the um, dashboard comes in. This is a very familiar site to most of you. So let's see what we did with that. Um, we are checking the performance of Tallinn City. Let's scroll down to our favorite subject, waste management in our project. So let's open it up and see how Tallinn is performing. Um, there is this subcategory of the hand, separate handling of um, collection facilities. We see that Tallinn gets three points, so we can thank the government. The government sees how many people care about it. Then we also got the feedback from our interviewees that people don't really understand how it was calculated and what it corresponds to. So here we embedded an explanation from the official website of Tallinn as to um, why the city is doing so well. Um, people can also comment on it, contest it, say that they're skeptical or suggest something um, as to how to revise the methodology, for example. And here we also embedded a way of looking in the mirror again and seeing how we can help, how we can make the government's actions more powerful. So here we are asking, well, do you also separate cardboard? Do you also separate bio waste? And people can engage in the forum and comment on it, or they can see their ecological footprint. Here again, we see that their own personal profile is designed intentionally in such a way as to mirror the indicators that we are measuring the government against as well, so as to achieve a some sort of a parallel between what the government is doing and what the citizens are doing so as to foster a spirit of collaboration rather than competition because we believe that if the governments see that their citizens also care and are also putting some effort um, they will be more likely to set up some ambitious climate policies rather than if they're being um, compared against other municipalities across the country. So um, I believe you're all excited about uh, all of this. And, uh, but like I said at the beginning, it's our citizen, the first focus. So first, 
we ask our citizen, what do you think about it? And uh, you know what? Most of them actually like it. It was really easy to use. You have all the function that they wanted in just one single one. Surprisingly, there is, was no actually favorite function. They like it for different reasons. If it was for fun or for more dialogue, one concern though that we will know we'll need to address, it's for non-tech users like elderly people. How do they do to use it? It's uh, one of the concerns. But one of the best thing of it is that they all wanted to add features and make it on their own. They all have suggestions how to promote it in universities, in schools, uh, more sharing options or more social media, but also QR codes in like bus or cafes. And uh, especially added features. Some of them talked about us with uh, the idea of crowdfunding when they look at actually their food. Uh, food carbon footprint and having this uh, offset trade or even to participate in project with NGO. They wanted this type of information. So we took that in account for our next steps. We know that we need to develop this prototype and uh, have a stronger partnership with uh, Anate Adam. And now we look at the citizen and what they want within you, local figures, we need politi politicals, we need officials, we need NGOs to actually give us our input and make this application on your own, like have a special section in the forum, share your heavens that uh, you're actually doing, etc. We need also help with the promotion and the social campaign. How do we actually look for every Facebook group in uh, each uh, local government and take them to this type of application? Like I told you, we want to add also again, new features from what our customer citizen told us, but also after our talk with local figures. And for that, we had this idea to actually engage even more partnership with Volis, which is a e-council information system, government service portal of GovTP, a procedural environment. They all have different functions, but they have one thing in common. They're all working with the local government to provide solution for the citizen on application. So we want to create at the end a universal local community platform in Estonia for citizens so that they can have all these function into one single app and have access to it, create like a real online community. So I hope you like our presentation. I hope you will have a lot of questions and proposition with us. And uh, yes, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Um, questions and comments, um, either from the audience or from the Zoom crowd. So uh, feel free to start. Would you like to kick it off? Just we need one mic here. Would you like to kick it off? Okay, thank you. Um, so. I see here two different um, like um, prop propositions. Uh, propositions. Uh, first is to combine Anna Teada, Petition, um, all these different kind of environments that already exist in Estonia, but they are like scattered and uh, uh, yeah. What I saw is the first idea to let's build an app that would uh, be like a gateway to all these different environments. Uh, in one way, I believe in it, but in other way, I would say that uh, um, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't see the potential in this in so much because uh, if the problem is that people are not. Uh, getting to these environments when they have something they want to engage they want to say something then making an application that you need to promote uh, so the question is still how will they find this application if they are not finding on the other petition so yeah <laughs> maybe this is my first comment and a second part thing that i saw the a proposition to um, uh, add uh, the functionality to minimum values that people can say thanks and sa can comment. I think this is uh, quite good idea, something to think about. Um, yeah, 
I will pass it on. I don't have a certain question at the moment. Maybe you yeah. want to comment. Um, but uh, Annette Ada, uh, I looked yesterday at the comments on each application. Citizen actually really liked the application, except of minus problem technical, like we can see that in every application. Uh, and they actually said that uh, they were missing some features and they were feeling that it was too little and the potential were actually bigger. This is why we thought to add those type of function and to mix it with uh, the dashboard, but also further application. And I, know, I think this is the key actually to engage citizen, to not only have those multiple ways to have access to all this information, but have only one gateway. And uh, like I said, we need to go with also social media to have this campaign of social media complaint. One uh, of the feedback was really useful with this idea of QR codes in cafes and public bus stations because this is where actually, well, you have nothing to do. So this is the perfect moment to go for the question of the week or to calculate your football print. So I will say, I think we count mostly on that and on this type of engagement, um, but maybe my team wants to. Um, yeah, maybe I would like to add a bit about more social media. We, um, during the presentation, we <clears throat> paid a bit of attention to the social media platforms and the um, such promotion ways as hashtags for the question of the week, for the forum, where people can actually discuss what they're worried about, what their concerns, and through the means of uh, social media, again, hashtags, um, I wouldn't call it maybe self-promotion, but still it's the way I would say even cheap way to spread the word and make sure people use it and um, are engaged with the apps and their functionalities. I just had uh, Misha, my colleague is uh, showing also during the question of the week, we didn't have time, but we had this idea of a month challenge. Every month we're going to present a special subject about environment. And this month is um, waste management. And uh, we were thinking that uh, every citizen during the question of the week can have his call and register with his local government. And so at the end, we have one local government winning the month's challenge and maybe have a special prize, have a special like, well picture on the social media page, etc. So actually, this application is really for citizens to feel community, but also online, especially after the COVID crisis. I believe that we all need this sense of community. We've been away from each other and we don't know how long it will last. So maybe an online platform with this type of application where they can discuss, they can play with their fellow citizens, talk about uh, when is the market tomorrow? Or have you seen that there is a concern coming into town who wants to participate into cleaning this uh, beach uh, next week with this NGO? Those are the tips I think that can convince citizens to go on our application and make change for, our climate, for the environment. I think there's a question in, uh, in the chat, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um... Uh, my suggestion is to take the, uh, this comment very quickly. So the question is that uh, uh, the choice of the colors of the application, why blue, not green? Well, blue, because um, I can, uh, for me, blue is uh, Estonia. We try to be faithful to the blue, white, and uh, dark of uh, Estonia. And um, because like I said, again, this application is for citizens to feel at home, to feel with their local community. If you just put green, um, I don't know, maybe they won't feel at, as warm and welcome as when you see the color. I'm from France and I can assure you I'm wearing blue, white and red every day. And uh, I think it really brings this sense of uh, citizenship in all of us where we see our colors, we see the symbols of our city, etc. Real quick, um, also the colors of the dashboard are blue, and because we're talking about the cooperation process, uh, it makes sense. Even if you look at the um, logo, uh, it's a combination of Anatada and uh, my municipality website, so that made a lot of sense. That's why it's not green. Daniel has a, a comment or a question online. Uh, let's try if it works. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Uh, thank you also for the team one. Um, I wanted to say from my side also as a comment to maybe all the teams that this year uh, all the teams have been uh, exceptionally fluent with all the methods that uh, we've 
uh, we've uh, gone uh, through or we've uh, tackled together. So uh, big applause to all the teams also that uh, have, uh, have very successfully used all the methods and uh, reached the results they re reached. Maybe one, my question would be that um, uh, for the team one, uh, because I wasn't here last week, then my question would be, uh, did you, uh, you sort of uh, try to put everything into one app. Uh, my question would be that, um, uh, was it uh, too scary to go with uh, just uh, one uh, single feature or uh, what made you think of uh, combining all these features into one uh, uh, single solution? Well, we can imagine users taking advantage of all the features that we presented at the beginning in a separate app, but we struggled very much to conceive a way that they could, uh, out of their own volition, go and check out the dashboard. So we thought that we need to hook them on something that they would be using anyway, as many things that they would be using anyway as possible, and then introduce into the mix the dashboard with which they can then interact using those features um, in a way that's embedded in the dashboard interaction environment. So this is why we did that. And we couldn't think of any other way to get citizens to go to the dashboard otherwise. All right, I think it's uh, my turn. Uh, I just had a quick comment. Um, when you were showing uh, the carbon footprint, I think you had a section on tips, right? How to improve your own behavior and stuff like this. And I was thinking, uh, because airlines actually do something where you can immediately after you buy a ticket, like uh, offset your carbon footprint, by uh, basically. And uh, I was thinking maybe you could like uh, this kind of functionality where you either can donate to like a, a NGO right away or where you have like this connection directly to the NGOs like really uh, like uh, because you said that you were to include the uh, uh, local governments a lot but also the local citizens right so I think it makes sense to really include the uh, NGOs if you already have for example this theme of the month which is waste management then this is like the month to uh, support your local waste management NGO or what whatever so I think this is like I, I, I love the app so I think this is uh, super cool and I think there could be really like a lot of more potential also. Yeah, just a quick, quick, thank you for the comment. And actually, yeah, we think that this uh, footprint calculation has a lot of potential. Right now we put it there for people to understand that this is not only about expecting and yeah, being skeptical about what is like government doing, but also seeing that, oh, wow, there are some things that I can also take care of and like putting some calculation measures there, for example, asking people, okay, how often do you buy like shoes or how often do you buy clothes and things like that, that no one will actually think maybe that, okay, this also affects. So we want to like, first of all, kind of put the thought there and see where it goes and very good comment also. Thank you. I just had this very interesting because one of our feedback uh, was, uh, was with a girl who uh, saw kind of imagining a carbon footprint and uh, was uh, really scared of it. And uh, she told me, uh, well, I would have loved to have a function where I can actually donate to association or participate to event, etc. So for sure, this off offset trade is, uh, should really be part of those next steps and uh, there should be a reflection further around it because Apparently, it's something people really care about and they want to act on it. Uh, thank you. I, I agree with a lot of comments uh, said before. Um, I think um, uh, the features that you developed were well connected with, with what, uh, what you heard from, uh, but I think uh, what you lack is connection of these features. So you didn't connect these, the, they were just separate features and I don't really see how they, uh, um, how they make one app in, in a way. And, uh, and sec second thing, uh, what we also try to say is use as much existing as possible and don't try to create new. Uh, you really wanted to, I understand that. It's, it's always a desire to, to create something new and cool, but, uh, but it's always very difficult to get new people to download new things. So, so in that sense, uh, um, empower the existing and use, uh, use as much as possible from the existing and try to connect, connect the dots. Uh, you had a lot in, the, in this app. Maybe I would have liked to see 
um, maybe more thoroughly one topic and then uh, then to see how how it would uh, would work. Um, in terms of the take action and the offsetting part, it's a good idea, but uh, again, I don't see the connection with local government. So if you could make a connection, so I don't know, you pay more or less taxes than to local government, whatever, but, but the connection, because right now offsetting with like the airline, I, uh, because this dashboard or this, uh, this task was all about how to nudge local governments. So, so uh, it's really cool to think of new features, but you always have to keep in mind what's the problem or what's the task in hand. Um, but uh, overall, really good job. So thanks a lot. Thanks so much. Right. Um, in case there are any final quick comments or questions, we can we can move on. Thank you very much. Um, and now we move to the to the next group. So it's all right. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. All right. The presentation is gone, but. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well, and uh, I hope we can do just as good a job as the group before us. Uh, we're going to present our, uh, let me take this maybe, so we're going to present our project uh, like we've already introduced, it's going to be in cooperation with uh, uh, Public Sector Innovation Team and the uh, Stony Ministry of Finance, and uh, the aim of our project was uh, really to uh, work on solutions for uh, for like better public services. Ah, the presentation is back, perfect. And uh, exactly, okay. So the, it doesn't seem to work, but it's okay. So the aim of the project was to ah, okay, yeah, to go beyond the dashboard and to answer the question of uh, how might we create. Uh, can I can I go back with this clicker? Maybe again. Yes. All right. So I, I will just continue like this. Uh, so how might we create actionable noise through the means of the dashboard? And we, who is we? We, that is me, Lucas Volkmer, that is Benedetta Veneuso, uh, Alessandro Paceroni, and uh, Eric Santillan. And uh, let me introduce to you what we've done first when we started out. Basically, what we wanted to do after we... Uh, <laughs> after we, maybe Eric, can you actually click for me? Maybe that's better so I can talk more freely. All right, cool. So what we did was uh, basically we did some field work like all the other groups as well. So we collected data on uh, Estonian citizens and we really tried to assess like what are the pain points for the citizens? So what is it where they disconnect in terms of uh, how they engage with environmental topics? And um, what we found out, what we uh, created two personas basically from the interviews we collected with on the one hand, uh, a more activist, which is, uh, we call them Janos, the activist who really wants to take action. He's very engaged with the community and tries to convince other people to also take action. And on the other hand, we have also a person who is somewhat active, but not necessarily doing as much for themselves. Um, Anna, the climate enthusiast. And both of these, even though they were kind of active, had the same pain point that uh, citizen activists have trouble finding and utilizing information from the dashboard. So really like this idea of like, how can I find data and how can I utilize the data? That is really the pain point that they had. And uh, building on this, uh, that we had uh, like more active uh, people that we interviewed in our personas, we really tried to build on this and uh, try to focus on the activist perspective. And um, now let me give you like a broad overview of what the activist perspective was. Basically, we asked the questions of, okay, so what kind of data are you using? Uh, what are you using it for? How are you utilizing it, etc.? So this was our second round of interviews, basically more focused on activists, NGOs, influencers, etc. And uh, there's some common themes that emerged, for example, okay, we don't really understand sometimes what is the story behind the indicator, or what is the story behind the data, so I cannot really share it or utilize it because I don't understand it properly. Um, is the data like permissionless, can I even use the data like all of what I'm finding on the dashboard, etc. Um, how can I get up to date data, how can I make sure that I get the newest version of each data, is there like a way to ensure this kind of thing, etc. So I won't go through all of them. 
Uh, but in the next step, Alessandro and Eric are actually going to go a little bit more into detail into our solution of how we try to tackle all these issues. And then it'll become uh, more apparent um, uh, what we actually did. All right. Thank you, Lucas. Um, so thinking about the solution, we started with this idea that there's actually already uh, someone out there that is nudging uh, and it's doing, it's, it's doing this um, in its mission, so to speak, uh, nudging local governments, nudging the central government, people, companies. So we thought of this as kind of like reusing and we thought of uh, building on this and try to reuse what is already out there instead of developing something new or buy something new. And what are the things that we can reuse? Well, one is the NGOs or the activists. Another one is the infrastructure of the local of the um, government, the Estonian government. And the third one, which is within the infrastructure, is databases that are both behind the dashboard. But actually, interestingly, some databases that we didn't know uh, activists are col 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 uh, sorry <laughs> are connecting to data that they take from the dashboard um, to create, for example, mini publics for targeted campaigns. So these are the three things that we can reuse: activists, um, databases, and the the local government. And there is already a connection here, but the problem is. Uh, that there's no good interaction or rather that this interaction could be improved between activists and the government. How can this be improved? Can be improved on two levels, so to speak. One is the time and the other one is the ways of the interaction. And if we think about it, uh, it's basically quality of communication, right? Giving the right information to the right person at the right time. So it made a lot of conceptual sense, but now what, what's the practical implication of this? The practical implication would be to create value that can be shared by local government, activists, and the population at large. So here we have a pool of ideas uh, that consist of reusing, as I was saying before, what is already out there. And the key ideas that we, that we have here, the key components are um, pre eventing information of the data sets and the new indicators that are going to be published. That's at least what the activists are looking for. And communicate metadata, it actually came up also in the first group that there's some sort of a lack of information on how data are, um, what is behind the data of the dashboard, but not only the dashboard. This is also an important part to keep in mind. And then also to create uh, this loop where the feedback is collected from activists and NGOs, because we know that there's a communication before where when the indicators are developed, but as far as we understood, there's something like that the, the following step is kind of missing, and that is it, it, it turned out to be very important. This is some sort of the social component, and then there's the technical component, and the technical component consists of some, let's call it basic solutions, for example, uh, automated communication that could be literally just an email to activists, could be based on subscription, so tailored indicators, tailored data sets, or could just be, here is what we have been developing in the past months, here is the data set, here you are, you might find a use of it. And um, Excel data, now we have the, the image there, but Excel data should always be available. That's what from stakeholders. It's true that some of them are comfortable in using APIs, but most of them would like to go with Excel. And then, okay, no, it's not addressing me. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> so, um, then the, the last kind of component is create a connection or enable a connection between the open data platform and the dashboard platform because they are connected conceptually but not necessarily technically. So if we look at this slide, uh, this is basically some sort of a user journey of an activist as it is right now. And what we see is that there is awareness. We take the example of bike lanes. That is basically a hot, it was a hot topic during the local elections. So there's awareness in the public. 
the the activist uh, has interest, wants to create a campaign, has to go around and look for the data because he or she doesn't really know where they are or knows where they are, but not specifically, knows what could be the potential sources. Then there's cleaning and analysis. For example, bike lanes in Tallinn, the data is available uh, in, I think it's KML or KLM format is basically geo-referenced uh, uh, data, could be converted to Excel, but apparently it's not there. And then in the end, there's advocacy. Now we have the new uh, user journey or activist journey. And there are two main differences to notice here. The first one is that there's a like a little difference here in the data analysis part. Here, there's no cleaning anymore, ideally, of course. And uh, there's only analysis. And this means that there's time that is freed for the activist to be more creative, develop more, connect different data sets think more thoroughly about possible connections between data sets. And then the other difference is that the journey is a little bit longer because there's the retention part and the retention there is basically the retention of contents across the platforms, connecting open data platform and the, the dashboard. And this basically enables reuse or makes it easier. It basically enables a sort of repository. Now the repository is there, is the open data platform. But you know, that's like in this case is um, enabled and makes it and made it easier. And basically, as I was saying before, these are the key social and technical components of um, our solution that would enable a different point in time different creation of, of, of more value, basically. Now I'm gonna give the floor to Eric that is gonna talk to you about the, yes, about the um, next steps. Thank you so much, Ale. And um, we have seen the solution conceptually and we see the solution also applied to one case. So now we thought like, what, are, what could be next steps for the government low, um, low hanging fruits and a little bit longer? Uh, so to have this service in place, we thought that uh, the easiest part to implement right now is to include links and smart content, links uh, to other data sets, links to the um, methodology on how the indicators were produced, and also smart content when you're hovering around the dashboard. That's so easy to implement and very uh, useful for the uh, uh, activists. Then we thought that about the repository uh, to, to merge with the open data platform and the Minus Ballet um, dashboard. And that's an easy also uh, thing to do for the government to, to keep those two platforms uh, working together. Then uh, publish the guidelines on the data that is available about the indicators and the data sets. So people can reuse more easily this data into their uh, campaigns. Then get a channel of automatic communication. This could be either like an email as uh, Ale was explaining, but also could be an automated subscription for people to get the latest uh, data um, when it's updated. Then uh, it's also important to receive suggestions of what type of data and new indicators are required. And this could be like a more complicated um, loop of communication, but it's important to have it when you have a co-designed service. Then uh, a little bit more complicated uh, or technological uh, challenging solution is to get an API for automatic data updates for the NGOs to connect. And then maybe use uh, natural language uh, processing to create categories about the data sets that are already in the government and make it easier for um, next projects to be uh, categorized in uh, similar uh, categories. So, uh, Benedetta, please, can you uh, help us uh, give in, like a future uh, impact of these ideas? Thank you very much. Uh, allow me to bring your attention briefly on what could be the possible um, outcome of our project. As pioneers, we couldn't help, of course, by thinking on the long term and on the impact of our work. 
So the idea is this is going to give a voice to NGOs. And once you're going to have an NGO that is empowered, you do have a more civic participation. And it could also bring spotlight on more green projects um, in Estonia, potentially you founded as well. Uh, at the same time, like the idea of having like data that is actually usable and transferable also allows us data to be used for other kind of projects related to also other things and improve the public perception, which is something that definitely came out in our interviews, this idea that the government is not doing enough for the activist mind. We are, of course, aware that the aim of our project in the beginning was not to nudge like just the NGOs, but the ideas behind it is that by nudging the NGOs and by uh, nudging the NGO to nudge the government and empowering the NGOs, you're also nudging people and the civic participation, especially the youth, to nudge the NGOs to nudge again. So I, allow me allow me the repetition, but I hope that the concept is clear enough in this way. Um, so on behalf of my group, I would like to thank you for your attention today. And if you have any question, uh, I will try to make it as easy as possible to understand, but we will be very happy to listen to all your questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, I think these uh, suggestions are really valuable, uh, though a lot of them are the things we have already uh, came up uh, with ourselves as well, and we are uh, uh, thinking of them or, or we have uh, elim eliminated them as too complicated or not so low fruit to pick. <laughs> But yeah, adding uh, links to other um, platforms, really good idea. Um, we, are, we are having this in our calendar, <laughs> um, explaining more the methodology. We have the methodology explaining part there already, but uh, uh, yeah, we need to update it uh, with the new information. Um, yeah, um, maybe um, a question about um, NGOs. Uh, so did you get the impression from NGOs that uh, at the moment the environment doesn't give uh, like the methodology description that we have uh, is not enough or they are not finding the uh, all the different open data page and stuff because for me it seems like Estonia is so small and the, uh, activists and NGOs all know each other and everybody know about open data dot trick and everybody know about minimum mobility and everybody know about everything so it's not so big of a problem so what is your comment uh, definitely uh, they know what is out there uh, but what we try to um, solve in this sense is the problem of still having to then go and check and go and do this connection and make these connections. Now, if it's a person that has been doing this for years, of course, now perfectly knows where is that type of data, et cetera, et cetera. But still, the point is that this could easily, as you were saying, like these are low hanging fruits, it can easily be like made easier for them and this can free space and time for them to then basically think about something else that they haven't been doing until now because apparently they were maybe focused on making these connections that are not creating this huge problem but are still there uh, yeah, especially for like activists that not necessarily have like a big NGO behind them, but like uh, single individuals who also are, could be influencers, for example, on social media, who really want to utilize data like efficiently. Uh, for them, this kind of like thing can be very difficult. So uh, it does make sense to like um, include them also more in the process as we've outlined in our uh, like uh, second user journey, basically to make it easier for them to utilize the data. This was really the point we wanted to drive home that we not only like uh, have have a space for like big NGOs who of course can all can do all this data analysis, who can use all the data that is out there, but like the small like the the, the small activist, the person that really wants to get active, which was the first start of our presentation, right? We did our interviews with the Estonian citizens and people who theoretically like would be willing to be active, but they just don't know how to like use the data and information that they, that they find or even where to find it. So this was really the, the 
the point we wanted to drive home here. Want to add something? All right, perfect. Sure. Uh, um, Daniel, you had your hand up. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, team, for the really nice presentation. I must say again, really good uh, storytelling in the presentation, and uh, good uh, in that sense graphic design that uh, everything is clear, and understandable. And I must say, wow, guys, you went and talked to the real activist, and you got really uh, important uh, uh, knowledge about what is necessary, etc. Last time uh, when we met them, actually you still hadn't had uh, uh, so, so raw and so actually so uh, meaningful data from the activist side. But now you actually, I see actually, I think that you actually talked to real activists and re had some real information and uh, there is so much more serious uh, the solutions. And I guess uh, uh, I was uh, really anxious and uh, waiting for the solution itself. Uh, I see that you had uh, some really many, uh, maybe uh, uh, different uh, ideas hanging there. And uh, maybe if you would have had some more time, you could have uh, benefited from uh, uh, developing uh, one path of uh, how the solution can be either the notifications, uh, which is also as I saw that Enoch uh, posted to the chat as a good uh, um, maybe, uh, uh, feature and there, there are so just picking one uh, low hanging fruit that is really low hanging, as Carl, Carl said, and um, developing a story or even storytelling it uh, uh, visually would would have benefited it. So, but I guess uh, as a conclusion from my side is that uh, uh, your team really showed that uh, if you are stuck, then uh, then go and uh, get the real information and uh, you get uh, out of the, you get away from this, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, obstacle, let's say, yeah. So good work. Just to uh, continue where so uh, Daniel left off. Uh, I think the service design uh, process is always uh, a lot of ups and downs and sometimes the downs are very dark and you don't see a, a way out or you seem to find a way out but uh, but only to another hole. So uh, that was uh, kind of I think your team's journey was just running into sort of sometimes not dead ends, but just being in a completely thick forest and not really, I don't know, not having sort of the wider perspective. And I think for uh, the topic that you chose, I've uh, expressed it earlier, I think it has a lot of potential uh, because I see that um, you know, Oma Valitsu team is really a very small unit and their capacity to, to do something on their own, to run something on their own is, is rather limited. So, uh, so your goal of actually finding those people who could be sort of the amplifiers, who could actually do the work for them if they are provided with information has always been, I think for me, very, with very, very high potential. And, uh, and I don't know how many activists you actually ended up talking to, but I guess it was during the last week, but you can uh, fill us in. Uh, it, we did try to sort of struggle to get you there earlier. And, and that's really what Daniel's comment was about. If you've done it, uh, you would have done it a bit earlier, a few weeks, then you would have reached something like more specific and could have tested on them and, and come forward today with even the email or the notification, how that could potentially look like. And I liked your comment about the uh, that uh, we shouldn't think of NGOs or activists as uh, as, uh, as a very similar group, and that's true. Some of them are, are like single activists or, or young activists. And I think uh, people who are on daily basis involved with data a lot um, uh, are good with, uh, are better with data. And if you're not, and, and you're starting out and you have the, uh, the pain or, or the anger to, to improve the world, you may end up using data in not so good ways or not properly. So in that ways, perhaps the, the potential of actually raising uh, 
responsible data users as activists rather than like generating false data and 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 making those like circulating them uh, could also be one way uh, to think about it. So, and then just for the audience, uh, and I think uh, your group today uh, uh, focused more on the activists. However, journalists, especially the the local uh, level journalists and newspapers, I see also as as a great uh, uh, having great potential uh, to amplify issues, to bring them forth, and to work with the data. So. These are, I think, uh, really ways, uh, uh, sort of good ways uh, on how to go about it. So, but yeah, who, what kind of activists did you actually talk to? I think I'm just very curious yes. about it. Sure. Thank you so much for telling the story of our group. It was a very good summary of what we have <laughs> experienced for the past four months. And yeah, uh, we ended up talking to, I think, three or four activists, but the one that really, like, clear up the way to get out of this forest was the green, uh, green tiger, Ro Roje tiger, because they are a conglomeration of the activists and they are already working uh, with environmental issues with the government involved in many communications with the local governments. And they say, we are green nudging the local government already. So we said like, there is the thing, you can reuse these people that they are already working, they know already how to do a campaign, they already know how to use the data, it's just about providing them with the good fit, as we were like asking ourselves, what kind of data they need? And there's like, yeah, we need Excel, like as simple as this, like we need the Excel, we need to be updated, we need to have the latest one, and we are going to produce, we're going to merge, because that's our job. And we're all gonna make the deliverers for you know the government. And if they want, the, the other part is if we want to share like this information, this dashboard that we are creating, there should be a space for us also if there is the interested for interesting interest for that. And we found that, for example, in the open data uh, repository, there's already space for publishing this kind of uh, dashboard that are merged with other information. We just said, well, let's not create a different thing, just make available in the um, finance ministry. All right, thanks. Um, there was a question from the chat as well. So whom do you regard as activists? Who, so who are those activists? I think it's partly related to Helen's question as well, but, yeah. but in general, how did you? So I think uh, Helen already uh, explained it quite well that uh, activists is like, it's a very diverse group in the sense that you will have, for example, NGOs that could fall under this category of uh, being like activists in, in, in the local community, but it can also be the single individual who's an influencer. So uh, really like you have to make a differentiation there that there's like uh, different forms of activism, like small scale, medium, large scale, etc. And there's multiple ways how you could classify, but we really try to focus on, uh, okay, we have like the big players basically who are NGOs, which have uh, employees working for them, who have like data analysts who are employed there and can really focus on uh, like doing like uh, more thorough uh, data analysis. And then on the other hand, you have like the really small activists who are just like the single people, the people we started talking to in the beginning, basically, uh, who want to take action and who want to also share that they take action and uh, they don't have a team, they don't have anything. They, like you said, they don't have any education necessarily in data analysis. So uh, what they do is they go and just take what they find and don't really question it in the worst case. And um, so for them, it's really important to uh, like understand this more thoroughly. So the two groups were through very small scale, which is basically single individuals, influencers, et cetera. And on the other hand, NGOs, which are like organizations basically. Oh yeah, sure. I just wanted to add like on the comment that you made before about how in, in general in the non-governmental sector in Estonia everyone knows each other. Um, it is true like that we definitely recognized how like there is like since it's a small population country I use it like the with finger. Um, in general yes it is true that there are like some bigger NGOs and some bigger groups that are more established but it's also a country that has like a very big um, raising number of interest groups uh, not even like specifically just like focused on Estonia but like me sometimes like focus just on the Baltics or focus on like com collaboration between countries and of course if we were having like more time it would be interesting to see how specifically we can try to engage more this interest group and how like you know potentially this data could be like a service for them in their empowerment in their establishment from an interest group to something more stable. 
Also, to take your feedback into account, we haven't regarded yet uh, the journalist side. And of course, you could regard journalists just as much as activists if they're uh, writing articles on this subject. So uh, this could be some avenue that we could explore also further to ask them, basically, how do you like collect your data, etc. Thanks. Uh, I have a question as well. So especially since a lot of your insights came from talking to activists, um, and this project is fundamental about using the data to make sense and then actually informing our, um, our further steps and actually nudging our behavior. Um, did you discuss or did this somehow came up when talking to activists, whether they actually trust the data that the government is currently using in order to make sense what the environmental situation in Estonia is? So there was one activist group, like NGO we talked to, uh, which I'm not going to name now because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, but uh, basically what they, like I can tell it to you later, but not in this public context. What they, what they told us is that uh, they were worried that some of the data was apparently classified because they were using some data in the environmental context, which they couldn't access, or if they could access, they were not allowed to share it. And apparently, if they upload the data also on open data platforms, basically, um, the default setting was always that the data was classified so that other NGOs couldn't use their data. And uh, this is also why we put it somewhat in like the permissionless data, basically. Can I use this data or can I not? This question arose for them because they were uh, not entirely sure. So this goes in the direction of not trusting the government because they were uh, worried that there was an agenda from the government basically to uh, keep some data classified in order to not raise questions that might be uh, well not, not welcome let's say uh, so yeah we encountered this basically yeah for sure thanks um, anyone else from the room any uh, last minute comments uh, there was still a final comment by Daniel in the chat that uh, you did reach to very interesting and important insights. And uh, thank you very much acknowledges this. All right, if there are no any additional questions or comments, then thank you very much. And, um, and uh, we're gonna be having a small break now and let's reconvene half past 10.